Hi, we are here to um, talk about uh, dementia and aging. It's a passion of all three of ours. Uh, my name is Sarah Tucker, and I am the dementia educator at Eastside Neighborhood Services. Uh, in this uh, program, we are grateful to the legislator for funding uh, uh, that is from the Minnesota Board on Aging uh, Dementia Grants um, that is bringing this program. And my name is Clarence Jones. I am uh, formerly the outreach director for a federally qualified health center in South Minneapolis. I am now a cultural consultant for the uh, Minnesota Board of Aging, and I'm working with Eastside uh, Neighborhood Health Services. I am also a, a caregiver of a caregiver, and uh, uh, my my wife is uh, working with her mother, who has who is suffering from Alzheimer's. But I'm extremely excited about the opportunity to talk with the community about this whole issue of the, and this disease of Alzheimer's and how we can help you to deal with this issue. And my name is Yoli Chambers and I'm also a cultural consultant with the Minnesota Board on Aging. I'm also the Health and Wellness Department Administrator for Central Teron Guzman, an organization that supports uh, Latino families. Uh, but I think to start, we should talk a little bit about what is Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So Alzheimer's is a disease of the brain um, that causes problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. Um, it accounts for 60 to 80 percent of the cases of dementia, and it, it is not a normal part of aging. It progresses over the time, and it is ultimately fatal. But there are 10 warning signs that uh, I, I would love to invite the audience who is watching us to learn more about it. I'm just going to mention a few of them uh, just because of the, the time that we have. Uh, but if you um, recognize some of these uh, signs, then you should talk with your doctor. So these are the three more common ones. It's memory loss that disrupts uh, with life. So uh, the person uh, might forget uh, uh, things or information recently learned or they can start asking for the same information over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is confusion with place or time. So they um, might not know where they are or how they, how they got there. They can also lose track of dates and seasons. And the last one that I would like to mention is changes, changes with mood and personality. Um, they might become anxious, depressed, or even suspicious. Uh, they can also um, get easily upset at home, uh, at work, or even with family members or friends. But each person is very different. We all know that, right? Uh, and they might experience one or more of these warning signs in different degrees. Mm. And I would like to talk a little bit, now that we have given uh, a short uh, explanation of what it's Alzheimer's. I would like to talk a little bit about the impact of this disease in our communities. Um, so the Latino community is the fastest growing uh, population and Latino elders with Alzheimer's disease or other type of dementia uh, could increase from fewer 200,000 people to uh, 1.3 million people by 2050, so it's a huge increase. We are one and a half more times uh, likely to develop Alzheimer's or other types of dementia. Uh, and we also have a higher incidence of diabetes, which puts us at a greater risk of developing Alzheimer's. Um, and an, an other thing that I would like to mention is the stigma. We still have a lot of stigma in our community mm -hmm. and uh, oftentimes the warning signs that I was talking about it before, um, they are um, misunderstood as a normal part of aging. Uh, and if a diagnosis is given, there's a little understanding of what are the steps that family members or the elders should take. And just to uh, finalize, the last thing that I want to mention is that we as Latinos were very family centered. So um, you, uh, this disease impacts directly millions of caregivers, 
uh, family members and friends because usually in most cases the elder with Alzheimer's disease stays at home and one family member uh, takes full responsibility of, of them which can lead to caregiver burden, financial strain and emotional stress resulting from uh, providing these amount of hours of care unpaid. So I encourage all of you to visit the Alzheimer's Association website is www.alz.org uh, to learn uh, more information about this disease and there are many other ways that we all can get involved um, so we can support these elders and families uh, to have a higher standard of, of life and a good quality of care that they deserve. Uh, but Clarence, why don't you tell us uh, now why, uh, what, what is the impact in the African American community? Well, after listening to you, some of the impacts are very similar in, in the African American community. We know that uh, Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in all Americans. However, in the African American community, it's the fourth leading cause of death among older uh, African Americans. Uh, in our community, it's two to three times more likely for an African American to have Alzheimer's than the, the white population. And like in your community, uh, chronic diseases such as hypertension and diabetes are also uh, factors that uh, they're looking at and studying that says that this is also a reason for the high increase in terms of Alzheimer's. So like your community, we also have uh, the idea that we excuse a lot of our elders for their behavior mm -hmm. because we just think that it's just a part of being older or aging and so what what we want to do is we want the community to be aware of the signs that you mentioned before uh, we want people to know about the various resources that are available to help families right now who are in need of these issues and the other the other part i want to say to to the community is this is that we really want our community to become much more engaged in studies around alzheimer's that affect our families and so mm -hmm. Yeah, and so bouncing off of that, um, I think hearing both from Yoli and Clarence, um, no matter what community you are involved in, if there are um, concerns or issues that you are having with um, memory um, or any other concerns, to seek out support mm -hmm. and seek out a diagnosis. I mm -hmm. think whatever is happening um, to a person, you want to have an answer to what it is, right? And once. Once you know what that is, you can take the next steps on how to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk a little bit about how, uh, how to live well with a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of clients that I've worked with, uh, a, a lot of people living early within the disease, I've seen live uh, a very full life and to be an advocate in their own community mm -hmm. to say, yes, so I have this disease, but I am living well, and nothing's going to stop me. Mm -hmm. And it's very empowering for um, people who are living with that disease to share that with other families, uh, whether a caregiver or whether um, somebody living with the diagnosis. Um, there's a couple of quotes that I want to share um, that I think are very empowering um, for those uh, living with the disease. Uh, this is a woman I worked with. She said, I chose to get involved because I want purpose. I want to be engaged and for my life to have meaning. And so that was a, you know, a choice to seek that out, mm -hmm. even though she's living with the diagnosis. Um, a caregiver, um, challenges can either diminish or flourish you, and I choose to flourish. So these are active choices. Yeah, so to, uh, living well with the disease is a, is a personal journey. It's, mm. a, it's a personal choice to take that. Sure. And giving the person the space and the respect mm -hmm. of where they're at um, to take those steps. So I want to encourage um, those who are watching different ways to live well with this disease or to be active um, as an older adult. Uh, you know, there are so many different ways that really do affect uh, our brains affect our attitude and who we are. Um, physical and um, brain exercise is very important. So 
So whatever is good for the heart is good for the brain. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very good thing to do. Eating healthy, um, I think, is good for everyone yeah. at any time, but it, it really does stimulate the brain. And really, all of these, it's, it's mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. right? It's taking good care of yourself. But what all of this is doing is it is bringing on, um, it is helping the brain to exercise. It's mm -hmm. helping um, our overall well-being um, to be better. Um, also, social activities uh, is huge. Uh, isolation, um, depression can be uh, a result of when somebody is diagnosed with dementia, um, those, those things can happen. Mm -hmm. So being able to be social with others is very important. Um, focusing on the positive, um, finding meaning and purpose, like we were talking before. Mm -hmm. So these are just a few ways of how to live well with the diagnosis. And so I encourage those who um, may have concerns uh, or do have the diagnosis or a care partner to really think about these things um, in your life. And so uh, we are really um, excited that we got to uh, talk with all of you and I hope you gained a little bit more information uh, and some ideas. Uh, you can see uh, some information up there that has our contact information at Eastside Neighborhood Services. We have various um, programs for older adults as well as various ages, so you can look at our website or our phone uh, phone number and give us a call. Um, also, where Yoli is at, at Central, the information is up there uh, with the website and phone number. Um, we would be happy to connect with you and um, uh, get you involved in the community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.